Hi, this is Kathy Strain with Iron Butterflies Project. I am one of the co-founders along with Shelly Friend. And tonight I'm here with one of my dear friends. Her name is Sandy Sandifer. And Sandy and I have been friends since the 80s. We may not look that old, but we really are. And uh, I wanted to share with you a real Iron Butterfly story because Sandy understands more than anybody else what it's like to be an Iron Butterfly and to break through that cocoon and to be a stronger person. So let's start out by telling a little bit about where you got your start in life. Where were you born? In Canada. So she was born in Canada, and then where did you end up moving to? Portland, Oregon. To Portland, Oregon. When, how old were you? A month old. A month old. She was given up for adoption by her biological mother, and she was adopted by her mother her name, her mother's name is Jean. Jean. Her mother's name is Jean, was Jean. And her mother took her to Oregon and she had her first father who decided that they, her father couldn't deal with the fact that she had the cerebral palsy. So they ended up breaking up and then she, her mother remarried Warren, who they also called Sandy, by the way, which I think is kind of interesting. But they called you Sandra at home, didn't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. So then tell us about what happened when you, after you were, how old when your mother and father got married? Two. You were two. And then you had a sister. And what is your sister's name? Charlotte. Charlotte. Marie. Charlotte Marie is your sister. She's how many years younger than you? About four. About four years younger. And so you grew up in, in Oregon. And it was always a little difficult for you because you had cerebral palsy, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, you felt like you didn't fit in sometimes? Yeah, and my parents. Your parents? Keep, keep, keep me. Treat you? Like a little person. Like a little? Little and, and normal? Like a normal person? Mm hmm. Did they, um, was it more difficult for you because of that? Yeah, no. No? So they gave you as much as they would give your sister and treated you just like they would treat your sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then as you got older, it, you felt like it was getting more and more difficult for you in your life. And this is where there was a pivotal moment in your life where you made a decision. You were 17 years old or did you say 16? 17. So you were 17 years old and what did you do? I tried to kill yourself. So she said she tried to kill herself and how did you try to do that? With a kitchen knife. But something stopped her at that very moment. And what was that? I knew. You knew? I believe. I believe. You believe? God. In God. And you felt like He was there telling you not to do it. Mm -hmm. So then what did you do after that? I had, I had, you had? I had to, uh, I had to bring. You had a friend? I had to. In high school? Who was a Mormon? Who was a Mormon? Mm hmm. And. And. He. She. Could be a book of Mormon. She gave her a book of Mormon. Yeah, and you read it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that's where your life really turned around, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I like. You what? Yeah. Like? The Osmonds. The Osmonds. Especially? Yeah. Especially Donnie, that's true. Yeah. That's very true. Uh huh. Yeah. You knew something special about him, uh huh? But you didn't know what it was at the time. And so, because of that, you were able to understand joy for the first time in your life, right? And you turned yourself around. And now, you find a lot of joy in your life. You find a lot of happiness in your life. And one of the things that we were talking about earlier was the fact that 
from that moment that you had thought you were going to kill yourself to changing your life to realizing that God cared about you, that something else was important to you. And what was that besides God? We were talking about it. Music. And that's another thing that she turns to a lot. And we talk a lot about that with the Iron Butterflies Project as well. The importance of music in so many people's lives and what it means to them. And there's a particular song that Sandy loves. What's that song called? Whenever. Whenever you're in trouble. It's called Whenever You're in Trouble. And the song is basically about when somebody's in trouble, who they can turn to. And it was written for a father, from a father to a son, but Sandy looks at it as what? Who are you talking to? Talking to God, as God listening to her. And that's very important to her. And like we were talking about before, the importance of music in her life. And I think that that's very pivotal. Now, a lot of people would look at Sandy and wonder how she can just keep doing what she does every day, getting up out of bed and struggling, and it's very difficult. But she's a true iron butterfly because she has influenced so many people's lives because of the joy that she feels now, because she turned herself around. And that's one of the things that I love the most about her. Everywhere we go, she knows people. And everywhere we go, these people embrace her and put their arms around her and treat her like she's one of their best friends because she's like that. And one of the other things she told me about is that she likes to send cards. Tell us a little bit about the cards. service of others? That's right. Uh-huh. You can't do a lot, but you can do a little. And so what you do is you send letters to people and cards, right? And in fact, last night I met a girl who told me, who told Sandy how much it meant to her that when her sister passed away, Sandy sent a card to her. And it made her cry because she realized that Sandy, that there were people out there like Sandy who did care. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I sing. You sing. No. no, you think? No, sing. Send. Oh, send. Uh huh. Cards. Cards. You gave gave to me. To what? To Donnie. To Donnie's family. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's important to her too, and they're very appreciative of that. In fact, also when we, we just saw Donnie a couple nights ago, and he, she had sent him flowers, and he was so appreciative, and he said to her, he said, thank you for the flowers, and that's one of the things that means a lot to her, to be able to do that. And the other thing was, is she got a moment with him, he gave her a private hug, and what did he tell you? I love you. I love you. Very quietly, just to her. And that means a lot to her, and this is something that's so important to her. This is what she looks forward to, is taking these trips, isn't it? He said, he said, that you're special, uh-huh, mm -mm. B-E, beautiful, mm -hmm. and she's beautiful, isn't she? And she's the example of a true iron butterfly. And she keeps me going, let me tell you, on days when I want to give up, I think of Sandy. And we can all learn from Sandy. We can all think about when maybe we can't make that next step or do that next thing. Think about the fact that, you know, Sandy struggles every day to take that next step, just to get up and out of a chair, or just to do simple things that we take for granted. She's a real iron butterfly. And she's my favorite iron butterfly. Let's smile and leave. Thank you so much for your time, Sandy. Mm -hmm. I've had such a good time being here this week, too. We've enjoyed it, haven't we? Yes. Mm -hmm.